This episode of After Dark is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. For 25% off your new account, head on over to Shutterstock.com and use the promo code GAMEBREAKER1113. GAMEBREAKER TV Everybody and welcome to after dusk dark time after dinner after dinner time it seems to be darker in the studio than it's ever been but maybe that's because I haven't turned this light on right, right there. No. there we go is that better oh no no that, no turn that's it a lot off. better now turn, turn it off no you got well, it's turn brighter it it's not we're not as late we're not as late we gotta be it, it's happy I don't know why we have a night skyline here anymore no, everybody, welcome to After Dark. I don't think we haven't changed the name yet. I don't think we've decided if we're actually still going to do that or not. Um, but this is After Dark, the live call-in show where you guys call each and every week and make the show possible by calling in and ask us, asking really any question your heart's desire. We are now at our new time. For those of you guys who maybe missed the live show, we apologize. If you didn't miss the announcement last week, we are changing times to 6 o'clock. Um, so that everybody can kind of get done a little bit earlier and uh, everybody can actually get some sleep. So, uh, joining us this week like he does every week, except for last week because he was just too cool to come hang out with us, Mr. Mike Byrne! <gasps> Laser <laughs> surgery? Oh, I want you, sir. <laughs> I want you, sir. Well, just come on, a little shout out to the Zoolander. He can only turn it, right. If you're gonna do the dramatic whip, oh, it was the Zoolander look. I completely missed that. Your, 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 your T grows. I did watch last week's episode though. It was a, it was a great episode. That Zista that. dude's kind of like interesting. You missed out on being a part of it, being reinvited to, uh, to Team Zista or Zista people. It's not Team Zista. Oh, it's no. Zista people. I am proud to admit that I am once again Zista people after the Listen, cheesecake Listen, I didn't eat the cheesecake. Did I didn't place. eat the it cheesecake. Place. I am Zista people again. <laughs> and joining us all the way from Chicago. You guys know him. You guys love him. Mr. Zach Schultz, also known as Kiggles. Hey there, guys. It's me, Kiggles. Oh, God. You, uh, you just get back from BlizzCon, too? Yes. I was trying to find my Uncle Deckard. All right, let's go ahead and just uh, throw it right out to the callers. Let's get this show going. I don't have anything to throw at you guys other than let's uh, let's just jump in it. Let's do it. Please. So, caller, you're on the line with Gameberg After Dark. Let's uh, let's take your name. Let's take your number and tell us where you're from. Your number. Wait, Hello, what? Where was that Sire, pitch? And my number is zero zero zero. Oh. What's your question, yeah, Muhammad? Glad to have you back. Thanks for calling again. Yeah, thank you. I think uh, I had a lot of exams. That's why I was not able to call in a lot. Ah, I see. Exam time. Damn you, winter solstice. Good priorities. Yeah. Good priorities. So what do you got uh, for us? So I have two questions. One of them is for Kegels. Uh, so I'm going to ask Kegels first. Uh, Kegels, uh, is Diablo 3 a clone of... Uh, Wow, what is Wow a clone of Diablo? Because Wow, because Diablo three came out before Wow. I really need to know. Am I being trolled here? <laughs> I may have, I may have made a statement. I may have made a statement when I was inebriated for five hours, <laughs> comparing one to the so, other. So, 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 for like, not two hours out of the day that you can actually account for. <laughs> Hilarious. That's right. What what was your what was your statement? Wait, wait, hang on, Muhammad. What was what was your statement, Kiggles? What did he say? He asked me if WoW was a Diablo clone or Diablo was a WoW clone. And, and, and you that's not what that was not my point. My point was that they were all being streamlined and funneled towards something that's very similar. They're very different in ways, but many things are very similar. And one thing is, they're all being Hearthstone. Okay, but continue. <laughs> b before Very we go down this road, in ways, but somewhat similar. Um. 
You're Ryan forgetting, you're League, forgetting the... and League is Riot. There you go. <laughs> that, there that's the refrain. There it is. Warcraft is Diablo. Diablo is Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never live that down. You'll never live that no, down. All right, Mohammed. So, uh, so what'd you, what'd you have for the whole panel? I right, so my question is, uh, what do you think about the Diablo three expansion announcement? I mean, I don't really think a lot of people were excited about it because most of the things they announced were already data mined like two to three months ago. Yeah, I think that a lot of the, the I, I got to agree. I, I feel like it was a trying a big push at BlizzCon um, to talk about Diablo 3 and the stuff that was coming in it. But I feel like nothing new about Diablo really came out of BlizzCon because everybody kind of already knew everything due to due to data mining sites and whatnot. Um, I don't know. Have you guys have you guys played Diablo three recently at all? I recently yes. picked it back up. I ended up playing yes. for like an evening. I was kind of disappointed to when watching last week's show. You guys kind of talked about Diablo three and, and BlizzCon specifically, and like you and Zista, there was no line over there, and even you guys didn't go over. It was that standing, kind of experience there. Standing right next to it, right next to it oh. with no line, and I was just like. I'm going to go stand in See, line for know. Heroes of the Storm was, for another hour. I was really turned off by Diablo 3. I got it on launch day, and of course we all know the fiasco that that was and, and some of the auction house and stuff. But I'm like really pumped for this expansion to the point where I started playing on the PC again. I bought it for the Xbox 360 so I could check out the control scheme and how that works and if it's better there, if it's fun I, there. I'm can I interrupt you there? For the expansion. Yeah. Can I can I interrupt you there? I so my no, girlfriend I'm actually. No, because I'm done with the thought. So well, fine. Then I'm going to just start it's not, speaking. It's not an interrupt. It's a toss. <laughs> my uh, my girlfriend just started picking up Diablo on the console. She downloaded the trial and tried it out, and she actually really liked the the feel of it. Um, yep. and said that she and a lot. I've been hearing this across the board that it that it just feels like it belongs on the console. Now you said he picked it up on the console. Do you do you agree with that statement? I do. At the moment, I prefer playing it on the console, actually. Hmm. So here's the thing. I, and I guess here's here's my I'll throw this question to you since you're actually excited about Reaper of Souls. I play I recently played through I, I loaded up Diablo and realized I was still only about half. I was like halfway through act three on nightmare difficulty. And I was like, all right, well, I'm almost there. I'll just finish this up and go kill Diablo one more time. Now, granted, I get it. I'm only on the second difficulty. It's not meant to be hard, right. but remembering the fact that the boss mechanics don't change just the amount of health that they have and the amount of damage that you have to do to them to win it wasn't fun like i i was like okay yeah yeah like i i, I get it like diablo is more about the items not necessarily the boss encounters the boss right. fights but like i got to diablo and i was just sitting there like it i didn't feel challenged to it at all and 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 making it so that they have more health or they do more damage to me doesn't make it challenging in my opinion and i think that's what they needed to change to get me reinvigorated about it i needed to feel like the gameplay was fun and exciting and i didn't feel that when i went back and recently played again i'll admit i was only on yep. nightmare so of course it's easy i get that but still like i I, the game doesn't change. The game doesn't evolve. There's not more abilities or anything to handle as you progress through the game. The Diablo that you fight on normal is the same that you fight in Inferno, if I recall correctly. Not quite. After you get above Nightmare Mode, you do start seeing additional mechanics as well. I mean, not, oh. not to the extent of you know something like a, a World of Warcraft. There's all kinds of mechanics going on for this raid boss. We're not talking about that, but there are different mechanics once you get up above nightmare mode when it's not just about experiencing the story, first off. Hmm. Uh, and second, if that's what you're looking for, then probably I would just flat out say Diablo ain't for you, brah. That's just that's it's the way possible. it is, man. It's catering to, to the players like me that, at least when done correctly, which the auction house, I think, was a big drawback, though, always online. I don't we could talk about those things all day, but when it's done correctly, this is the type of game that I love. I'm going to go in there without an auction house and beat the piss out of a monster 900 times because I really, really need that one piece of gear or that next piece of loot. Uh, so I think, yes, one, you should probably up the difficulty and try again. 
just so you can well, experience I gotta play through mechanics. like I gotta but, play through normal, then I gotta play through nightmare just to get into hell, and then I gotta play through hell just to get into inferno. That was that's dumb from the beginning. Why that are was you dumb. About replayability? Why, Did you why really are you just bitch about replayability? <laughs> that's not replayability. That is forced oh, okay. replayability. Oh, you're, you're first damn I would have never started on normal difficulty. I would have at least started on like at least nightmare, if not hell. I'm just First saying. Back on the show. Unreal. <laughs> Unreal. All right, let's go ahead and try uh, on a higher up. difficulty. If it's still I'll try. not for you, interesting mechanic-wise, then the game just ain't for you. That's. I mean, I didn't it. get to answer the question, but you know, my opinion doesn't matter because I'm the most annoying after dark host, so it doesn't. No, matter. no, no. What, so I just I thought you were you I, I thought you didn't have a much of a huge opinion about Diablo three. I know I know you dislike it. You don't know this about me, but I have a level fifty whatever archon level 50 whatever it's called i am i am i have played that game it is not like i have not played that game and my biggest problem is that some of the rare mobs or some of the uncommon mobs the one with random abilities those are harder than the bosses absolutely those are harder than the end bosses once you get up to the highest difficulty those are a bitch and they're so much harder than the bosses, and that is my main problem with it. I don't have so much of a problem with the auction house, and I actually like it because it helped me. I can because I can go and grind my head off, and I might not get pieces, but then I can go and get the use the gold that I used, and I will never pay money for that shit because that is just the height of stupidity. But um, I went and used the gold to buy better pieces so I could get better levels. That's that. That's what that game is, and yeah, it was repetitive. And hey, it's Leah. Like you can, <laughs> you can parody it all you want, but that's what it's a grinder's game. That's what that game was made for. So now wait a minute. You can't say that it's a grinder's game and then be, and recognize that that's what the game does well, and then be in favor of the auction house. Come on. Yeah, you can. I still grind. Just because I grind doesn't mean I've bought pieces off the auction house, but Kiggles grinds. It's only Kiggles knows how to grind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, he is DTG. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh god, now I just lost my train of thought. Yeah, no. You can you can have both of them if they're done correctly. It's just the real money auction house was a it was a cash grab and it was stupid and. Gold, you can buy gold, so gold got all out of whack, and you bought, and there were things on there that were way more pricey than they should have been. It just you are it, like one of the few I've ever heard in favor of the auction house, and I'm sure there's there's more like you. Well, I mean, there's none like like you. You're a unique little snowflake, but I'm sure that there's some that like the auction. But even Blizzard said this; it took away from what the game actually was. He doesn't know. care. He's like, I'll still buy it, from it anyway. I want, I want, the only thing I want, see, the only thing I want is rune words. I want my goddamn rune words back. That was the most, that was the best part of Diablo 2 was finding runes and making rune words on these, on these, on this gear with sockets to make it amazing. That was my favorite part of the game. And the runes were really, they were uncommon. And that was, that's what, that's what made the grinding worth it was finding the rare runes and i agree with you that the auction house makes grinding less appealing in in diablo 3 but for those of us that actually like did the grinding and got gear from it it was fine <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and move on. We actually, I realized, I just looked at the clock. We've already spent uh, like 15 minutes on this question, and we got six more to go. So uh, let's take, it up, uh, take another caller, open up the lines, and call her on line with Game Breaker After Dark. Tell us your name, tell us where you're from, tell us your question. Good morning, gentlemen. I'm Incognito from chat, and I have two questions. One for Kiggles and one for everyone. I got it. Oh, it's gone. Never mind. I was going to ask it. I, I, I had a question for you, but it's gone. I was going to ask if you have one of those little, like, tabletop metal ball things that go back and forth because I was hearing a click in the background to a very 
No. Oh no, that's that's no, me. That's not me. Oh, is it Kegels? So Shafnit, <laughs> asked, so Shafnit asked the first guest for their phone number, and the second <laughs> guest if they have swinging balls. <laughs> nice. <laughs> What's your question, caller? Since I have to take over the show. <laughs> yes, please do. <laughs> All right. First question is for for Kegels. Kegels, who's the idiot that told you that you're the most annoying host? I don't know. I like to read YouTube comments, and I why? Keep on putting, why would I'm you put yourself person. through that? Because Those are the I'm worst. For pain, God damn it! I love reading all the bad things about me because I don't know. YouTube I'm comments are. I, I'm sorry, YouTube. I know we post videos to you, and I love all of you guys that are out there. Nice, but some of you are just fucking assholes, <laughs> and you have no reason. <laughs> To say I what you totally say. disagree with Shafnit, and I love every single one of you posting comments on the YouTube version of this show. It's so much fun to read some of the comments on some videos. Like, I was in Mumble, and we were reading some of the things that were said on the Chinese food <laughs> video, and there was one that was just... I mean, I can appreciate a good troll, and, and a good a good really good inflammatory statement if it's well done but i mean come on you got to think about your trolls dude if it's just a stupid dumb troll it's just a waste of everyone's time you're wasting your time and you're wasting my time and i know that's the point but at least make your trolls original <laughs> all right so what do you have uh, what question did you have for us tonight the main question is about blizzard you probably have noticed how they cherish the servers on hearthstone pretty much not got in when they randomly pick people. Same happened with Diablo 3, the original beta. Where if you got in, something like that is happening with World of Warcraft. And for Diablo 3 expansion, will the same happen? That very few people will get in the beta. It will be crap beta tested, or even if you want to call it testing, and only a fraction of the game will be available. And we will have a new, new catastrophe on our hands with for, the game not being tested. For World of Warcraft? No, for Diablo 3, the expansion. They chose the servers. Barely anyone can get into the Hearthstone beta, and it's been how long? Uh, but they talked about potentially opening up. I think they said they were going to try and open that up either December or January. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. What do you guys, what do you guys think? Where, where do you think that where Diablo three Reaper of souls is currently being beta tested at? Do you think that it's going to be at a good place when it finally comes down to launch? I think so. I, I, I would be surprised if, uh, if this one gets out of hand, the launch got out of hand and I don't, I'd like to say that it was because the, the servers and things weren't stress test. I just think it was just wildly was not ready for launch. And that's why the, you saw what you did. Uh, when Diablo 3 initially launched. I don't think, obviously, anything like that's going to happen. We're not talking about server arch architecture and capacity now. We're talking about expanding a game that's already now on a reasonable architecture and working. And I actually think I, rem I could totally be wrong, but I thought Blizzard's intent was to really open this beta up, that it wasn't going to be a very, very tight beta. They wanted to get a ton of people in there. I could be totally wrong on that, but I seem to remember reading that that was the intention. We didn't get a launch uh, date at BlizzCon for it, did we? They didn't mention anything like that? Mm -mm. No, 2014 is all I know. So, I mean, we could still be, uh, even though, you know, maybe only a few people are in there. Um, sorry, my eyes are watering. I don't know what's going on right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like I'm crying. I looked over there. I was like, maybe I can pass it off. He's like, like, nope. I'm really worried about this beta test, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> no, and my eyes, there's something weird that just all of a sudden they hurt. Um, so basically... My beauty, is, my beauty is painful. I know. It's okay. Um, I don't know. We're, 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 so you guys just think that, that basically they just haven't had the time to open it up yet? They're, 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 there's still plenty of time for them to, to release yeah. the beta to the public so that they won't run yeah. into any problems. There's plenty of time. They'll be fine with this one. They're not testing the server. They're testing the actual game this time. Right. So I don't think you're going to have anywhere near the problems we did at launch. What do you think, Kiggles? They need to 
make sure this doesn't become another Hearthstone beta where people, where keys are so rare to get at first and people want to play it and get their hands on it. And normally, Blizzard, I don't know, because I'm really not a beta person, but usually Blizzard betas aren't like that, I don't think. There, like, Hearthstone was novel in that way, wasn't it? I mean, I know there's a closed beta and an open beta, and um, it just seemed like the incremental way that they were giving out keys for Hearthstone. I, maybe they were trying to do it in, like, a, like, the fan sites give them away, and they were trying to create press for it, and I get that, but it just made everyone act like assholes, and that's what they need to not do with... <laughs> Reaper of Souls. All right, let's get to another caller. And uh, but before we do, I want to tell you guys about a sponsor that we have here on Gamebreaker TV, a sponsor that is perfect for anyone out there who is trying to um, really create some interesting works of art within the creative industry. Shutterstock.com is a great service that has tons of images that you can use and inject in your projects. We use it all the time here with a lot of our different images and. Uh, icons, but another thing that we've actually used it on is the XIV Reborn, which might you guys know Mike Byrne from. Uh, we've used it actually even on their uh, their podcast kind of intro, um, which it's basically again just to kind of get in depth for you guys out there. Shutterstock has a lot of images to use, and some of you might look, you know, at, at an image like this and just kind of question, well, how do I really use that with? Um, with what you know, the image I'm trying to make here, and and the best way to do it is through layering, and that's a lot of what Shutterstock images can be used for. You know, maybe these you can't use these clouds on their own, but you're able to integrate them with some of these Spark images or or other images throughout Shutterstock that you can find and really create some dynamic looking images. So as you can see here, we took this image from Shutterstock and uh, layered it on there with some text and a Final Fantasy logo as well as some sparkles right there and uh, kind of just made our own individual icon and that's really what Shutterstock's great for. Shutterstock has so many different images to choose from that are abstract and really stuff that like I, I'm, I'm decent at Photoshop. Don't get me wrong. I like to I like to pride myself in the fact that I think that I know my way around the computer and editing but I can't make this. I have no idea. That's black magic to me how you would make that and having a service like Shutterstock to go to to just purchase these assets is is a great great service to have so if you guys want to check out any of the awesome stuff I encourage you to go over to shutterstock.com you can sign up for a free account but if you find an image that you want to purchase and you're ready to purchase head on over to shutterstock and when you're ready to check out if you use the offer code gamebreaker 1113 1113 you'll get 25 percent off your new account so head on over to shutterstock.com and check it out start creating all of your awesome crazy graphics and you know what if you guys use something from shutterstock.com send it into us tweet us at uh, or tweet us with the hashtag gb after dark if you use anything from shutterstock and make an image out of it send it into us we'll put it on the show and uh, we'll show what you guys are doing with some shutterstock images it'll be cool and i'd love to see it so send those in and check out shutterstock.com let's move on here and take another question and uh just keep the show moving so call her on the line with game breaker after dark tell us your name tell us where you're from and tell us your question Hello, this is Eduardo from Mexico. Hello. Wow, you got a better microphone this time around, Eduardo. Holy sh crap. Oh, yes. Uh, I, well, I wasn't at home last week, so... Ah. How's it going? Yeah. Did, you wanna, did you want to proposition oh. Eduardo there, Shafnit? <laughs> I, I guess I got to proposition every single host in some way, shape, or form, right? <laughs> How's it going, Eduardo? What, what question you got for us? I, I'm good. Well, uh, my question is, well, it's a, it's a two-part question actually. So first, what the hell is going on on gaming conventions? Because I, you know how it smells, right? It smells horribly. It's reeks of filth and decay, and I wonder why is that? What what the hell is going on with gamers and their hygiene? And also, the sanitary conditions are so bad that. I think all of you who went to BlizzCon got sick, right? Nope, so nope, that nope, I was not sick, for the record. I stayed 100% <laughs> healthy, didn't get sick. Just saying. Because I showered, I showered on a daily basis. I didn't shower on a daily basis, but I, I didn't get sick. Do you think that, sick. that gamers are breathing the next 
super bacteria that, that will eradicate humanity on their basement. <laughs> That's it. Hum humans, gamers, and hygienes. What do you guys... Hy hygienes. You know, hi hygienes. Hy 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 hygienes. Um, Are those skinny jeans? No, they're not. They're just... <laughs> yeah. Don't show your ass. You might... You might you might make Sky run over to the Game Breaker Studios. What's your phone number, big guy? <laughs> yeah. Um. One eight hundred hygienes. <laughs> wow. Just wow. Oh my. God. I don't even know. I'm trying to think of something like here, here, here. Are we are we creating the next super bacteria? Here's the only thing that I can think of. Um. No. Be well. Maybe. Maybe in no. that essence. Because no. No, 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 because no, listen, 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 wait. War of the Worlds, hello. <laughs> War of the Worlds, how did the aliens die? Because they weren't used to the diseases that were manifesting uh, in, in, within humanity for years. So if we as gamers are just sitting in our was, caves no, and, and just getting microbes. sick. It was no, it was it wasn't humans. It was whatever. It was like, it was bacteria, bacteria, no, yeah, and it was not humans. That was the whole point. Was that the littlest back, the littlest microbe was greater than the whole human civilization? Yes, but but kidding. it was the fact it was the fact that the aliens weren't accustomed to the diseases that we had already adapted to that they succumbed to it and died. We've had generations of generations of people die to these diseases and we've evolved to survive them. That was the whole idea of the smallest bacteria yes. at its yes. core. So I'm trying to think of what way this would turn if the bacteria of the poor hygiene in gamers was to destroy the world. Are you trying to the make world. the case that some fat, sweaty gamer's ass crack <laughs> is going to save the world at some point? Oh, no. I'm, I am not sure what is going on here. I'm, no, I guess what I'm trying to say is that is that is that the fat, sweaty gamer ass crack is gonna is gonna save himself. We're all gonna die, and he's gonna inherit the earth. The amazing Slash Man. Are you? Kidding? Thank God I played that Diablo expansion for 72 hours straight and build up that funk. Oh my Damn God, aliens! I'm going to take this puddle of water that I'm sitting in, and I'm going to vile it up, and I will be the ruler of Earth. Who With knew swamp ass was good for something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I don't even know. But I you, don't you even know. You're, you're talking about someone who, okay, at their, at their longest is going to be 90 years old, and these bacteria have evolved over millions and billions of years you've got to be kidding me <laughs> the answer is no is it disgusting <laughs> yes but it's not they're not mixing any bacteria bacteria is not evolving that fast okay i don't was i, I just ignorant i don't, know. I don't so, know you haven't seen this funk when i'm raiding i gotta i gotta i gotta say this, this is gonna get oh damn this, this is gonna get <laughs> I don't, this isn't gonna get funk. graphic or disgusting but as a kid, as a kid, I used to like, oh I used to be God. able, I used to be able to go like a day or two and like not shower and just be like, whatever. I'm sitting in front of the like computer playing a video game. I don't care. I can't yes, sit in front of the computer. because you went through puberty and now you have, you know, hormones. And I can't an sit in front of the computer for more than like two hours showering. without feeling gross. And I'm like, man, I need to go shower. Ugh. Just wipe the well, day like you, gross away. I, you might have some glandular problem. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know. I hit puberty. That's what it is. What's your, I like, what's I like your that superpower, explanation. Mike Chapman? Well, I can fend off whole armies by going like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and move on and take another caller. Call her on the line with Gabriel After Dark. Tell us your name. Tell us where you're from and tell us your question. Hey, guys. It's Zista. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take another call. Let's go ahead and uh, oh. let's throw it to a Twitter question real quick. 
Oh my god. You did not just do that. <laughs> Brendan <laughs> Bowers. Brendan Bowers <laughs> asks. <laughs> Xbone announced that it will not be able to stream to Twitch until 2014. Xbone? I'd like Seem one of those. Can seems like seems like we're playing off as a launch feature. I don't know what do, what do you guys what do you guys think about this? Twitch Twitch is uh Twitch is uh, tw Twitch they, they were they were pretending that was a big thing. Everybody thought they were going to stream to Twitch right off the right off the bat and uh now it looks like news, they're holding that off till 2014. At, news at 10. News at 10. Things that were supposed to come out at launch don't come out until later. In other news, water is wet. That is all. <laughs> Tonight it's going to be dark. Guess what? Your PS4 can only record for 15 minutes. Oops! <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, I think we got another caller on the line uh, through that. Sorry sorry about that technical error, everyone. I think we got a, another caller on the line. Caller on the line with Game Breaker After Dark. Tell us your name, tell us where you're from, and tell us your question. Nope. You can't get rid of me that easy. Motherfucker! <laughs> Them shaft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Suck it. Welcome back, Burn. We have an amazing producer. It is good to be back, sir. You filled my seat admirably, but not enough to overtake me. Yeah, they liked you more than me, Zista. Ouch. Well, I wasn't trying I to steal your spot by any means, Burn, but, but I, I am I'm glad to have you back again. as Zista people. Oh, um, in, in fact, people. in fact, did you hear what happened this week? This is why why Shaftner was trying to hang me up. We we had a, a GBN uh, event just recently. Uh, Shafnit shows up, gets his druid invited through battle tag, and he tries to gank me in the middle of the event. That didn't go too well for him. He wound, he wound up dead. No, 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 no hang on, no, no hang on, no, no hang on. You can't just tell oh. half the story like that. No, I, yes. I can tell, any, I can tell yes. the story any way I want. Yes, I showed up. Yes, I tried to gank you, and because no one wanted to fight you, your health was never below 60%. So, yes, I never got a full attempt to try and kill you. Yes, we tried to duel, and I ran away with my cattail between my legs because you hit like a truck. But as long as I was wearing gear, you never killed me, sir. It wasn't until I stripped down to my skivvies and was in my birthday suit that you were able to kill me. That's all I'm saying. You still haven't. Like you ran away he's like a little for bitch. Phone numbers. <laughs> he's asked for phone numbers. He's talked about swinging balls, and now you got naked for Zista? <laughs> it's, it's true. You it's don't even want to know what happened at BlizzCon. You don't even want to know. Whoa. Whoa. And, I, and I am the gay one, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Good night, everyone. What do you got for us, Zista? So my question to you guys is, is one game enough to warrant the purchase of a, of a, a new console? Cause no. I I really am tempted. I'm sorry. To buy I'm sorry. It. You bought a Wii U and a PlayStation no, no, no. Four. You madman. No, no, no. Wii U, Wii U, not Wii U, even that. Wii U. On, but you uh, haven't. Wait. You, yeah. Yes, I just bought a PS4. Uh, yes, I just bought a Wii U yesterday. But now I'm looking at at uh, Legend of Zelda: Link Between Worlds, and I'm actually considering buying a 3DS now. Well, I'm about to do that. Literally, I am like holding my hands, like about to kill someone because I'm trying to wait for Christmas. And hopefully that Santa comes and gives me a 3DS so that I can get a link between worlds. Because supposedly that's the best game. That's the best oh, Zelda game in like 20 years. Oh. I'm so excited. Would it so be excited. too much to ask for them to put like some connectivity between the Wii U and the, the 3DS? I mean, we have our TV and the tablet screen. It's pretty Why much they like ever... a, a 3DS anyway. Why would they ever want to do that? They've suckered you into buying two consoles now just because Wind Waker's on the Wii U and the, the Link Between Worlds on the 3DS. But, but he hasn't told you the whole story. He wants to, he's, he's looking at all this stuff and he's like, oh wait, but we're going to have all these skins and champions when Heroes of the Storm comes out. What am I, he's like, I'm going to have to buy all of them. I'm like, no shit. I'm like, no. Anything no to do with, the, what does this have anything to do with Zelda? It has, it's because I told him I was going to return everything. my Wii U so I could put $300 towards uh, Heroes, Heroes of the Storm, of the Storm. Oh, okay. He's the male version of a shopaholic. He's the gamer version of a shopaholic. So he's, he's the male version of trade chat, is what you're saying. He should dye yes. his hair pink and start making internet vlogs. You got your he thing there. He already does that. He already does Literally. that about everything. 
<laughs> Have you seen any of his 17 blogs or vlogs about his shows that he watches? They're good. You should check them out, internets. And don't be bitchy to him like you're bitchy to me, assholes. So, so, so is this the kind of way you're trying to get it? Is, is, is one game a ju justifiable enough to, to buy a console? Yeah. Here's what I think about it. Just based on, and I'll throw it to you, to you guys here in a second. You, you shake your head no. I agree with you. But here's, here's my track record. PlayStation 3 bought it for Final Fantasy 13. Uh, Wii U bought it twice for Zelda Twilight Princess, or not Wii U, Wii bought uh, for Twilight Princess, sold it, and then got it again for Christmas for Skyward Sword. Um, I bought There's a place an investment. <laughs> I bought I bought a PlayStation 4, and then Watch Dogs got delayed, and I sold it. So, single games, I have a track, and, and Xbox, Halo. Um, I'll buy a Wii U the second that the new Zelda comes out on it. I'll buy it. I'm doing everything I can to wait till Christmas. And if I don't get it for Christmas, I'm going to go buy myself a 3DS to get a Link Between Worlds. Like, I agree with you, Kiggles. It shouldn't be justification, but it totally is. My track record tells me that I will buy a console for one game, hands down, every time. If I love the no, game enough. It's not justification. Just the justification. You're just justifying it to buy it. That's it's your like, line of reasoning to, 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 to talk yourself into buying it. Now, for me, I would never buy a, a system unless there was a critical mass of games that I wanted to play and I felt were necessary for me to play because that's what I really wanted to play, which is RPGs. So I didn't buy Final... I didn't buy PlayStation until Final Fantasy VIII was out. And I didn't buy PlayStation 2 until I don't even know when, but it was probably on sale and I bought it because it was on sale and Final Fantasies were out and I needed to play them. So if there were a number of Final Fantasies out, yes, I would buy them and I would buy all the other RPGs that I could get my hands on, but I'm not buying it for one game. That's just dumb. I mean, I know it's an investment and you're going to have it for a number of years and you're probably going to find games that you're going to want to play, but no. Because Burn. it's just too expensive right off the bat it's gonna get cheaper and no burn what about you uh i'm probably the wrong person to ask uh honestly given the fact that i collect consoles and video game stuff and paraphernalia and titles and boxes and all that stuff but uh, i initially said no but now that i think about it i did not pick up the, my pre-ordered ps4 i, I sold the pre-order to somebody else uh, because Watch Dogs was delayed. So I guess, technically, I would have been buying the PlayStation 4 for one title. Uh, when that title got delayed, I was perfectly happy to give up my version 1 PlayStation 4, which was probably going to break anyway, given Sony's <laughs> track record on first runs of, of consoles. I'm also not picking up the Xbox on launch day. I will eventually end up getting both systems, but I guess I could say, yeah, sometimes a title... I would have bought my PlayStation 4 if Watch Dogs would have been coming out. And that was really the only title I was interested in. Exactly. That's instead, why, that's why I, think, I gave Sony I think, Online $100 for a pre-order of a free-to-play game. I think I agree with your philosophy, Kiggles. I agree with you, but I have to look at like what I've honestly done. And the fact of the matter is, sure, maybe that was just my justification for it, but I've done it. One title is enough to sway me on buying a console. You're weak. I'm not going to be able something? to play a link between I, worlds unless I, I get a 3DS. Can I say something? Can I say something? You know, you thing. could have bought a really nice um, monitor for the amount of money that you paid for listen, a PlayStation 4. Listen, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to get a nicer monitor than this one right here is all I'm saying. Oh, look at that, that one. <laughs> look at that beautiful design you created. I know. <laughs> it's It's great, right? You can't you can't get a better monitor than that. That's like oh out of the box God. stock. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Call it out line with Game Breaker After Dark. Tell us your name. Tell us where you're from, and tell us your question. Hello, my name Hello? is Jigenator. I'm from Denmark. How's it going? Uh, doing all right. It's a bit late at my place, so yeah, I got a question about uh, that kids uh, are younger and younger when they get. Uh, digital uh, devices such as an iPhone or iPad, so I've seen 
girls, ten year old girls run around with iPhones, and I have seen six year olds, six year olds, uh, playing with iPads with all games. How do you think this affects uh, them when they get older? Because when I was a child, such thing wasn't around. Do you think it's good they are introduced to such thing at a, at an early age, or do you think they should wait until they get older? You guys want to take? I got something to say, but do you guys want to take this? Well, probably the person with a child should do that. <laughs> well, Not I'm guessing that's I'm guessing that's me, right? I'm the one that's bred. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, I have uh, three three kids. Uh, full disclosure here: uh, twelve, nine, and six. Uh, I don't believe in waiting for them to embrace or play with technology. Their father is very into video games. They uh, watch. They obviously they don't watch this show because of the the more adult oriented audience, but they do watch some of the other shows that I do. Uh, they play the games that are suitable for their age. I think they should be it's okay for them to be handling technology at early ages because it's going to be a very critical part of their learning life and their professional life growing up. That being said, my 12 year old has a Kindle, my 9 year old has an iPod um, and my 6 year old does not have any devices. They will not own them until she's just a little bit older. I don't let the kids do the Facebook uh, or anything social networking like that. They're too young for it, and they are limited to one hour of entertainment time per day. Uh, that could be video game console on the TV, gaming on the computer, gaming on their Kindle. So, yes, I think they should embrace the actual technology, but I think that as a parent, I'm doing the right thing by limiting the amount of time they are sitting in front of it and also limiting what they're exposed to, making that age appropriate, rather than trying to put some fictional age on when somebody should have a kid. Real quick, I'll yeah. throw this back to you. Um, just just before we, we move on and Kiggles, I'll let you just voice your opinion real quick. But I want to just bring this up is, is the other thing that a lot of people say is um, giving your children cell phones. And I think it's a fair enough assessment to say that we all made it without cell phones growing up. We started kind of getting them, at least I started kind of getting them as I got into high schools when they started to, to pop up all of the time and everyone had yep. one. But I, it was perfectly acceptable to drop your kid off at the movie. And well, I, OK, so it was perfectly acceptable to drop your kid off at the movie and not let them have their own cell phone. You would have like a second cell phone and give them the cell phone for the night and say, call me when the movie's done. And then, you know, it was my dad's cell phone. I'd call home and my dad would then come pick me up. I think, where do you stand on, on kids having the technology of, of, of cell phones and, and, and stuff of that nature? Is it, it, someone in chat said, I think it all really just, it, it all comes down to the parenting. Um, so yeah. what do you, where would you stand as a parent? Well, it's like any piece of anything. It doesn't have to be technology. It could be a piece of literature. It's, is it appropriate for your child? You as a parent need to make that <laughs> We're talking about gaming here, right? Uh, and I think I might have told uh, part of this story on a different show at one point. I thought I was having like a good parenting moment at GameStop one time when this lady and her kids and me and my boys were there and we're looking at games. And my boys know that if it's teen or M, don't even ask. Maybe T because they're getting to that age, but M, don't even ask them. You're not getting it. It's tough. And so I like I had this good moment where like. Some, one of the kids on the other side asked for this one game, and the mother goes, no, no way. And I kind of looked at her, and I was like, yeah, you're a good mom. You know, I didn't have to say anything. I was just, you're a good mom. Way to go. And she looked back, and she was like, you're a better dad, Vern. I don't know how she knew my name. But she was like, <laughs> you're a better dad. And we had this bonding moment. But then she actually bought them Far Cry 3. So that got bad parenting. <laughs> bad parenting right there. Uh, on the cell phone front, I digress. I apologize. You told a War of the Worlds story. That can't be outdone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> on the cell phone front, uh, no, none of my children have cell phones. My 12-year-old, now that he is starting to go out more uh, to places that aren't the park or right outside to ride his bike with kids, now that it is go to meet some friends at X location, we will give him the alternate cell phone when he's out there uh, and then take it off of him when he gets back. Uh, the rule in my house on that, and somebody asked about what do you do in winter and things like that. If the kids aren't in school, I give them a little more than one hour. And if they were really good, I give them a little more. 
that's just the electronics. Last night we played Settlers of Catan for three and a half hours. You don't need to be looking at a digital device is what I keep telling my kids. Uh, the phone rule here is if you want a cell phone, you better be able to pay the bill. That's it. And so the, the boys and, and my daughter, they're, they're not going to have a cell phone until they're 14, 15, and they are working a part-time job to contribute to the bill. Until then, no, you ain't getting it. Kegels, what do you think on the subject? I think he's doing the right thing. I don't know. I just, you, you have to expose them early, and you have to teach them good electronic habits. And <coughs> if you teach them early, hopefully it'll stick with them, but it has to be reinforced at some period because there are dark corners of the Internet that I have been to that I would not wish on anyone under the age of 21. <laughs> Yeah, and it's also important to teach them how to use it safely. You know, there there's things that if you want this device to work all the time, then this is the type that you don't be downloading everything. You know, they need to learn how to use that stuff, and I can be the guide for that, or I can be the person that says you aren't touching any of it until you're old enough to buy it, and now they have no idea how to utilize this technology that in high school and college and now even younger is a part of the learning curriculum at this point, so... I think I'm doing the right thing. I'm learning as I go too, though. So, and we all are. No, you're not. You're doing the wrong thing. All right, let's move on and take another <laughs> caller. Caller, you're on the line with Game Breaker After Dark. Tell us your name. Tell us where you're from, and tell us your question. Such a contrarian. <laughs> Hi. I'm How's it here. going? Hi. I'm from. Yeah. Hello. Are we good? We're good. Okay. Hi, I'm Peter. I'm from the distant land of Macedonia, and I have two questions. What do you got for us? The first question is for Mr. Shafnet. Yes. So, a new episode of Summoner Showcase, and regarding your bad league game and your monitor. If you're that, you if you're that fiddle, that. I swear to God, I will punch through this internet and just smack I, the I, crap I, out of you. I don't even care. <laughs> you owe me a monitor, I, damn it, fiddle! I feel compelled to ask, how mad were you? I was pretty mad. Jesus I, I I suffer. I I do. I'm I'm one of those people. I I will I will raise my hand and admit I suffer from competitive, especially in like if I'm playing with a bunch of friends and a bunch of people, I can keep it like in check. But if I'm playing alone by myself and like. It's not about it's not a matter of losing. I don't get upset that I've lost. I get upset when I feel like the game cheated me. Like if I if I lag out or if like I got away, but for some like if I've literally like jumped over like a, a part of the the jungle, but then for some reason I get yanked back into the jungle, like that'll piss me off. And it was one of these moments where just like <laughs> it had spiraled out of control, like fiddle fed beyond belief. And then it was one of those moments where like I should have gotten away, but I didn't and I was just pissed So it's not like I like hit my monitor. I wasn't trying to like destroy anything I don't think anyone ever is if I got mad. I like I just I, I didn't not like I didn't wind up like this far But I just I just got mad and I just chucked my monitor forward or my 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 mouse and my mouse bounced up and hit my monitor and that's What you should everybody never do. in chat that that knows what I'm talking about here you would you would love Final Fantasy fourteen then, Shafnit. No. If you break if you break things when you feel like you got cheated, yeah, jump into Final Fantasy fourteen and go have fun on Titan Hard Mode just once and let Not me watch. Chance. <laughs> Not a chance. What's your other question for us? So my other question is what are your guys' thoughts on why there is so much aggressive behavior when playing competitive games? Because Shafnit feels cheated anytime he loses. <laughs> no, not not true. I'll I'll I just told my story. I'll I'll chime in. You guys go ahead, and then I'll 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 give my two cents on this one. Why is there any aggressive behavior? One more thing. Oh, go ahead. Uh, hang on. Yeah. What's up? If Mr. Fandaria taught me anything, is you have to relax. Life is to be savored. You know, I swear to God, that sentence alone has gotten me out of studying so many times. You have to relax. Fair enough. League will be league. No, what a will, joke! Will, will, will league be riots? Oh, okay. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think here on, on the whole aggression? Of, what do you guys think of the uh, on, on the aggression topic? I'll give my two cents here in a second. 
because we're primates and Monkeys we're aggressive just bashing, and bashing this bones is the, and skulls. This is the natural evolution of it was what? It was wrestling and the Olympics back in Greece and it was wars and it's still wars and you know now we're doing it on the internet. It's nothing different than what's been done with humans. What I mean, what did they use fire for to burn each other? How did they how did they figure out how to make tools so they could kill each other and steal each other's women? I mean, this is what humans do. So and then why is, do it on the internet. Yeah. Right? We do it. Right? Digital doing it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Burn, you got any thoughts before this gets any more ridiculous? Nope. No? Everything Kiggle said. Thumbs up. All right. So like, I'm going to bring this actually because I'm the one here accused of breaking my monitor because that's actually what I did. Um, it's For me, it's, it's, a, it's very much a, a competitiveness. I think that any everybody out there, like there's some people who out there who who can play a game and and yes, they want to win and but they're okay with losses. And there's people like me who takes specific games very seriously and and really really want to win. Um, I don't play I don't play I don't play fighter games. And again, it, for me again, and it's different for everybody. It boils down to cheap, uh, ch feeling cheated. Uh, fighting games, I really can't stand because when you just get volleyed in the air for your, your entire health bar, I think it's stupid. And I won't play it because I get pissed off and throw the controller. <laughs> Everybody's cracking up, but I'm whatever. <laughs> so I think the thing, the thing, just clap the monitor, clap the, clap the, the mic here. What are you guys laughing about? Am I really, if, am I fighting a losing battle here? No, you just you you do the wrong. You are the exact reason why that's not what you should be thinking. You don't think about it in terms of how you think about how how you play league is how I got burnt out of diving. And I'm going to tell a story here, right? I was a college diver and I was really good. I almost made it to the Olympic trials and at some point I started caring more about outcomes instead of learning and getting better i thought but, i'm good enough to do this so i'm going to do it and i stopped trying the the where you try hardest is practice and learning and getting better because then once you have that foundation of knowing what the fuck you're doing and knowing all of there is to know you can implement it in diving competitions or summoner's rift or here's, whatever application you want here's the you're difference to of, that no, though you're thinking the, about it like no you're doing what you're doing is you're looking at the outcome and you're not looking at everything that happened to get there you're looking at okay the outcome sure. is bad and all of this was bad but you don't pick out something good that you did or you don't say a positive and you don't say a negative. What can I work on? What did I do good here? What can I apply to next game? You need to look at, and this is what Mylixia does You're... in the stream all the time. It's you have to learn from your mistakes. You can't just, I mean, you can rage and you Here's have the, to, you know, well, listen, listen, anger, listen. But Here's the problem, though. I, I feel I, like I'm on hit. After Dark with Plato tonight. I mean, you're like because dropping philosophy like it's nobody's here's, business tonight, here's Giggles. The, here's the problem with this. Here's the problem with this. I agree with you, and I've approached every single game, even when I'm losing. When I'm personally losing, when I've fucked up, I look at what I did wrong and try and figure out how I can do it right. The problem where this, this affects me in terms of breaking my monitor and, and league is... What you're when you're diving, when you're trying to assess how to make yourself better, you're not relying on four other people in order to carry wherever your dive is going to be. Your dive is entirely up to you. League, it's not. You can lose an entire game, no matter if you've played the best you possibly can. Well, then why does anyone play team sports? I've There's caused many of those sports, losses. Team sports have been around, and that's why people get pissed years. off in team sports. That's why people rage about. Freaking team sports. When so you're put fine. when you're put no, in a competitive situation that relies on multiple people. Because I agree with you. Don't get me wrong. I agree with what you're saying about a personal philosophy. And I have that. 
to a certain degree. Sometimes I let it get out of control. But what affects me, what makes me mad in in league is I'm not going to play the whole Elo hell bull crap. If I belong in silver, then I belong in silver. And this goes but I've been back trying to, to get out of silver. Yes, for, but this goes back to the conversation that we had weeks ago where you are trying to control everything. You cannot it's a team thing. You cannot control the other people on your team. Do you watch the top streamers? At some point they say, "Okay, maybe I can carry this. I have to farm. This is what I have to do." At some point they say, "Well, I can't do this anymore. I cannot control this game, so I'm just going to do the best I can and whatever happens happens." Yeah, That's how you, you have to look at it. If you don't if you, you can't control me, chef. I'm gonna leave mid and go exploring in the jungle anytime I damn well please. I'm gonna damn fucking well kill please. you! I'm gonna fucking kill you! Bring it back to mid, dude. You have to tell the primal rage story since you mentioned fighting games. You I have can't. to tell that story. All right, quick story. Then we'll take the last caller and uh, then we'll wrap this show up. Primal rage story is I don't play fighters anymore because when I was a child, I used to play. Uh, <laughs> shut up, Burn. I know exactly where you're going with this. <laughs> So I used to play, I used to love Primal Rage, but I would play Diablo, who was a fire Tyrannosaurus Rex, who had a combo that could literally just sit there and knock the guy up in the air, and then he'd fall. And then if you did the combo at the same time again, you'd knock him up in the air and, and fall him again. I was cheap. I was cheap. I I loved it. I love that character. That was the only one I would play because it was the this only one I could beat stuff with. This one the dude that was with. just like, I hate when people juggle me. I hate and when then, I get juggled. And then I would rage so hard about Primal Rage. See where that came from? Um, because there were two, uh, there were two dinosaurs that could like counter it. And when I couldn't sit there and be a cheap mother effer against them, it was the most <laughs> frustrating thing. And I get pissed off and throw the controller and quit. Which the game. is why you play Jackson, Aatrox, and all of the OP champions. And when they don't work, you get pissed off. If Aatrox was or if Aatrox was OP, he'd be seeing a whole heck of a lot more professional play, good sir. He's newer, so they don't know where to put him yet. They just don't know. He'll be I'll around go in season in whatever four. lane I damn don't you well worry. please. He'll be around let's, in season four. He was in season three. Let's go ahead and open up the lines again and get this last caller in so we can call it a night. Call her online with Game Break After Dark. Tell us your name, tell us where you're from, and tell us your question. Alright, guys, it's uh Nat Chicken from Game Breaker Nation here. How's it going? Hey, uh, I got, I got a very easy question for you. Because I, know you all play Warcraft at some levels, even Burn, and tonight is our first game recognition flex raid. Wish I could be there for a long time. It's scheduled for six p.m. PST for a long time, and y'all decide to jump your show right into the <laughs> middle of our raid time. How's that raid going? You guys, you guys started yet? Uh, we're the spots right now. Yeah, we've been going for about an hour. Well, cool. Wait, I'll, uh, we'll, we'll wrap this show up, and I'll I'll show up at home, and I'll I'll come join if yeah, there's spots on the alliance people side. Are, uh, people are hoping that they jump in. Well, we should do that. But real quick, before we do that, hopefully you got a question. I just realized I got to tell you guys about one more sponsor that we have here at Game Breaker TV. Uh, I don't know about you guys. I was last night. I, I was I was flipping through uh, my cable channel and because I, I I pay for HBO and on HBO I actually had The Hobbit and I started to watch it. Honestly, I'm okay with The Hobbit movie being separated into three movies. I feel like I was getting a lot of uh, story out of it, but I was pretty ticked when it got to the end and I felt like there was just so much more left to the story and I got to like I'm only gonna get the second third of of the story this Christmas and then I gotta wait till next year to to finish it. So when I finished The Hobbit, I was like, you know what? It's ridiculous. I need to go read The Hobbit. But instead of reading it, what I did is I head on. I went over to Audible.com and checked out that they actually have The Hobbit available for download right now. So you guys can get The Hobbit if you head on over to Audible. And uh, I'd recommend it. I was falling in love with the movie. It's it's so good, and I'm loving my experience through the book. I'm going back and and kind of retelling the events that I've already seen, and it's I'm I'm getting a lot more to experience there. And I think that that's so important when when movies get adapted from books is to get the full experience with um from the book. And uh, you know, it's almost like a happy medium here because you still get the story presented to you, much like a movie does by listening to an audio book. They've got a bunch of other movies that are coming out right now. Uh, the Hunger Games is one that I know that they have on here. So if you guys are excited at all about Catching Fire, they actually have a daily deal going on. I think it's about to end tonight. 
So if you guys actually want to catch up on uh, Catching Fire, you can get a, you can get a free audiobook. But I would here's what I would recommend. I would recommend going over to audible.com slash gamebreaker, <coughs> signing up for a free 30 day trial. You get a free audiobook so you can get a book like The Hobbit or, or, or any other book that's available. And if you head on over, you can pick up right now for only four dollars. You can get Catching Fire as well. It's a great, great deal. So head on over to audible.com slash gamebreaker. Um, all right, Night Chicken. Sorry about that. I just completely forgot to uh, to get to Audible there for a second. But Game Breaker thought... raids are going on right now, and I want to get home and I want to join the Flex raid. So that's the best part about Flex. I'm getting off work. I can come join my raid. But hopefully they got room. So you got a question for us, or you're just asking why I decided to move the show? Yeah, the main main thing I was just saying is is you jumped your show right into the middle of our raid, like you're trying to avoid us or something. Not at all. I want to get home and start raiding right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually gonna go do it. You guys should join too. This hey Burn. Was... Hey Burn, come come raid with us. Come on. I'll I'm rage with you. I'll rage with yeah, you for, for not too. going where you should. They're they're the best. Hey, no, 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 no. <laughs> PvE I can hold my own. Terrible. I, I, like, I love PV. Just don't ask me to PV. <laughs> Terrible alliance. Oh my god. No, we moved this show. It was a mutual decision because we love Burn. And Burn makes the show, so we had to move it for Burn. And that's not all I'm missing on raid. I'm missing. Wait, I am missing an hour of my raid too. So it's not like it's not like we don't all have a little skin in the game here. <laughs> Just for the record, I don't want to throw. I don't want to throw all guilt on Burn. I wanted to go earlier. I want to get home at seven thirty, not eleven thirty. And Q, our 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 producer, I'm sure she's gonna enjoy. I think she's. It's it's at least like. 1 a.m. I think. Hey Q, you out there? Q. Yeah. You want You want to go to bed earlier? Or yeah, yeah, R earlier than like three. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Q oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Out of this show until like a quarter after one our time. Uh, <laughs> so. the old time. And then I have to upload the show. Yep. And it's a lot of work. Up. So, yeah. so let's wrap up this. Let's wrap up this show so we can get home and uh, flex raid, go to sleep, get all that stuff done, and uh, just call it quits. Thank you everyone for watching for the new time. And Zach Schultz, you can follow him right down there at the Zach Schultz. Be sure to catch him each and every week here on Tuesdays on After Dark. All of his crazy, wild, and opinion guru Metastopheles talk. Best show game breaker besides Convert to Raid now and XIV Reborn and anything burns on. Without <laughs> anything, Jeff, it's on. And GBN Tweedle. cast. GBN cast. All the all the Unicorn shows. Unicorn duck shadow puppet. That, Legend that's not, legendary. Yeah, nothing that Shaft it's on. Rude. Guild cast. <laughs> Mike Burney, y'all are right I'm down here. Minute. Game biz. Game biz. At Magic Man One. <laughs> Be sure to catch them all over the place. Tweemo. Nick Twist uh, got all my vid my. I don't even need to I'm not even gonna plug your well shows. Done. You just plug them all. You just plugged well everything done, that Nick you're Twist. on. You guys can follow me right down here at Mike Shaft, and be sure to catch me each and every week right here on After Dark, as well as I do two shows, one going up on Tuesday, one going up on Thursday for League of Legends fans on the YouTube channel, Law Nation TV, so be sure to check those two shows out. One's a Summoner Showcase, the other is a News Recap, so go check those out right now. Thank you, guys. Sky, we need you to come on. We're giving you the My DMT. name is Shaft, I'm on, on IMDB. <laughs> go check out my IMDB profile. Congratulations, dude. Hall. See you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs> oh.